that is. And uh, so anyhow, yeah, so we moved up to uh, Richmond, Tri City. And my sister was born, she's two years younger than I. And she was born in Richmond, so that's how I know the time frame. Because I had asked my mom at various times, uh, why are you asking me? You already know the answer. I go, yeah, really. So anyhow, we lived in Richmond. Uh, my other grandparents lived in Richmond. And uh, my granddad, he was kind of cool. He was a Christian scientist, and I don't understand this totally. But he'd come and get me, and we'd go driving around. And he had his Bible all the time. So I just, you know, I don't know. I don't know if uh, Christian scientist is a, is a uh, valid religion or not. But I scrolled by him, and he was a pretty cool guy. And... Uh, so anyhow, we lived there till I was uh, in the third grade, and uh, my mom was a single mom. I'm assuming my parents got divorced. I don't really know. And uh, and anyhow, um, my mom had she let me run. I had, had a little uh, tippy, a little uh, little dog. And he was my bud, so and he yipped. So my mom always knew where I was because he was always with me. So, and so anyhow, third grade, um, I went, um, we moved to Seattle and uh, uh, over by Green Lake, if you know where that's at. And uh, lived there till sixth grade. and. Uh, uh, Denver killed myself again. I, know I hadn't thought about this for a long time, but we lived on a hill and there was snow and uh, there was a freeway down at the bottom. And I'm out there doing the sled and I went right through under the traffic. Yeah, mm. cars were going, you know, couldn't stop. And uh, it just had the end of God had favor on me, and I didn't even know who God was. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I got my, my picture was in the front page of the paper, the Seattle paper. <laughs> there I was, and I go, wow. Like Chase, he went right through the town with that sled. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, I saw the thing about it, it was pretty amazing. So anyhow, um, oh, and the other thing, The neighbor Bell was my babysitter, and uh, I got sexually molested by the babysitter, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what the hell it was. And I had to run. She come in, and I remember specifically she got naked and had me naked, and she come in and crawled in bed. I'm going like, "How old were you? Three or four? I was less than the third grade. I don't know. I was pretty young, yeah, and I just didn't mm -hmm. know." I didn't know what that, and I didn't want to tell my mom because I didn't want to get beat, you know, yeah. or scolded. So I never did tell her. So, yeah. And so, anyhow, uh, I moved up to, from Seattle, we moved up to, uh, or down to Portland in the Park Rose area. And, uh, yeah. And it was kind of funny because. I wasn't a very good student, but I had the best fucking sixth grade teacher I'd ever. She was beautiful. And I just stare at her, you know. And she said, Mike, you guys, you guys. You know, I just stare at her. She was that good looking. And, uh, and I'm just a sixth grader, you know. So, anyhow, yeah. And then eventually uh, we moved out to Gresham, out to Rockwood in Pacific. It wasn't Gresham at the time. And, uh, I had my horse, and my dog, another dog, and uh, I would spend my day all day long with the horse, Tony. I'd saddle him up in the morning, and I'd be gone all day long, wherever I wanted to go. It was kind of cool. And uh, yeah, so, 
So uh, progress and uh, went to Rockford Grace, Rockford Junior High, which is now a Lutheran school, and then uh, went to Centennial High, and uh, that's pretty honorary, pretty unruly. I mean, I would get in your face. I would. Uh, I would take care of business, put it that way, to the point that uh, uh, one time, uh, Royer, the guy that's the movie guy here in town, one of the Royer theaters, but his daughter went to Centennial High School. And I don't know what it was, but I hated his daughter. And I called her every name in the book and just made life miserable for her. And, uh, her boyfriend was the quarterback for the, for the football okay. team. Okay. And uh, he came looking for me, and I did the crap out of him. And I wasn't a very big guy. I was like 14 when I started high school. And uh, after that happened, nobody bothered me ever again. You know? And uh, so I was just pretty in your face. You know, I wouldn't take crap from nobody. Just, you know, I was the, the dark sheep, you know, in my family. You know, my sister was got all the favor, and I just didn't like it, you know. But I put up with it, and, uh, and uh, yeah, so. But God would bring people into my life, and I didn't even know who God was. And I had a church, a church of God, right across the street from me. And I only went there twice ever. It was for, um, you know, kids, school, whatever you call it. And, uh, and the pastor, he kind of felt sorry for me. He actually gave me a Bible and put my name on it. Wow. You know, and uh, he would chat with me, but I never really ever attended church and uh, kind of got really carried away got into seances and all that kind of stuff, uh, levitating tables, mm. stuff like that. Uh, what is it? For real. What is it? Huh? What is like levitating table? Witchcraft. You're on a table and you can actually just bring it up. Yeah. The whole table? Huh? The whole table? Yes. And, uh, and I thought, at the time I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. I can really do some cool things with this. Mm. And I... I finally figured out, no, I can't do anything cool with this. So, so uh, the last time I told this spirit, whatever it was, you know, we're in there, and I said, I'm done with you. And I took my hands away, the table lifted up, hit me in the chest, and fell back down. Wow. Yeah. And I go, wow, that was pretty, pretty uh, amazing. So I shied away from the seances and the Ouija boards and all that stuff, you know, which was, which was God again, you know, pulling me away from it because I could have gone very, very dark, you know, and, uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, the Dean of Boys at Centennial, he, he would always check me out every morning because he felt sorry for my mom, and uh, I would wear clothing that was inappropriate just on purpose. He said, come on, Mike, we're going, we're going back home. I'd give him a cup of coffee and I'd have to change my clothes and then we'd go back to school. But so, yeah, I was a handful. So anyhow, then uh, on my 19th birthday, my mom, is my birthday party, my mom hands me my draft papers, my birthday present. Uh, there what? Huh? Draft papers. Draft papers. Oh, wow. What year was that? What year? Uh, 1965. Yeah, 65. Yeah. yeah. So I was envisioning, envisioning all this stuff. And yeah, I went into the Army. And it was kind of cool because I went down to uh, California, to Fort Lord. And this was just before Christmas, December 10th. And uh, they were closing up Fort Lord. And they, they sent me back home for Christmas. Then I came back, and then they sent me to Texas. 
uh, and uh, made it through basic training. And uh, then they sent me to uh, Georgia to be an MP. Mm-hmm. I go, no way do I want to be an MP. In fact, I was so <laughs> adamant about it that I had a black captain and I called him some derogatory names. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So I used to say, that's what he was going to send a holding company and we'll send you off to Vietnam and come back to the catch it like everybody else. I said, well, that beats being an MP. So anyhow, I go into this holding company. I mean, this is the God. I go into this holding company, and after a month or so, they sent me to up to Aberdeen Fruiting Grounds in Maryland to welding school. Oh, okay. nice. I ride the train up there. You know. Okay, now let's get this over with. I go to Aberdeen, go to the Aberdeen Fruiting Grounds, and and you do have you have a regular army and U.S. The U.S. is a draft team. I'm a U.S. Right. I come into Aberdeen Proving Grounds and they go, how the hell did you get here? <laughs> no draftees come here. And I swore I had to do that. You know, I knew like how I got here. Let's just get me out of here. So I got through welding school and, and then ended up going down to, uh, to uh, Virginia and... Uh, Put me on a boat going to Vietnam. Had orders to Vietnam with 500. Well, you know the, the big, big yellow patch with the black stripe? Right. Yeah. And 500 Army and 500 Marines on this USMS Rose. Hmm. And it, it, that was a 29 day trip down through the Panama Canal and past the right and over to Okinawa and then down to, to um, Vietnam. But when we got to Okinawa, and there was a lot of things happened on that ship. That is too much to say. And anyhow, uh, uh, in Okinawa, one of the officers came up and touched me on the phone and said, get your bag, you're getting off here. And, you know, we had pulled in there. It was <coughs> brand new docks, cement docks, and ice cream lawn, and brand new barracks and all that stuff. And, you know, and this place is pretty nice. And... Uh, and uh, so I was surprised. You know, I was the only one that got off the ship. And uh, that was God, too, because uh, I was the only Army trained welder on the island. And I had a colonel for a CO because the company I was in handled all the supplies going to and from Vietnam via ship. You know? And uh, so he put me in charge of the welding shop. Here I'm an E2 or an E3, and I'm doing an E7's job. And, uh, and uh, so that was kind of cool. And then he made me the mailman. And then he also, uh, he had his own car, a Rambler that he liked. And I was his driver also. But he says, Mike, just keep the Jeep, keep the Jeep. So I had Colonel's place. So I could drive around any way I wanted to and never get pulled over. Because I was, I was the same as being a Colonel as far as driving that rig. And, uh, so I had a lot of, uh, just a lot of, I mean, it was God all over again. You know, I, I still wasn't a Christian, but God was taking care of me, even though I wasn't. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I lived down in the village and had my girlfriend and all that stuff, you know. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, in fact, the guys... After I got my time in and I was getting short and ready to come home, oh, Mike, you're not going home. You got it too easy. You got you, you got you got the best jobs on the whole island. I go, yeah, but I'm going home. No, you're not. You're going to take the money and re up. And I said, no. And I kind of see you guys later. I came home and uh, got off in, in Oakland. And then made my way back up here to Portland, and uh, I got a job as a as a welder right off the bat down on Sobeys Island. Then I progressed, and I was welding for Boeing. And I was welding the uh, they have these tabs that have to be perfect. Boy, in, in Sandy, on Sandy. Yes, and uh, to hold the 
motors on the wings. That was my job. And I made more money than anybody I knew you know, my age. So there's plenty of money to party and all that stuff and drugs, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, you know. And, uh, and then uh, uh, Dan Hanna, the car wash guy, he got it. I knew his vice president, which was part of the, the motorcycle racing crowd that I was part of also. Because they had a big motorcycle track out and rushing there. And, uh, and uh, anyhow, uh, he made me an offer to go work for Dan Hanna. And I, yeah, okay, I can do that. So I, I uh, ran a car wash and went around and spied on people, made sure nobody was stealing money from them and all that kind of stuff. And it was a pretty, pretty gravy job. Got to fly in his Lear jet and go to Las Vegas. And <laughs> that was the thing. Nothing to make me a Christian by any means. I mean, I remember being down in Las Vegas and all these beautiful gals, and, and they were remarking and said, Mike, you're too young for me. I don't know. <laughs> so anyhow, yeah, it was, it was an experience. But uh, mm-hmm. then um, the fire department job came up. I went and took the fire department test. Mm-hmm. Dan, I used to go into Dan's office first thing in the morning. And he, I'd say, what do you want me to do today, Dan? He would do stuff like, he had super hot cars, like he had this Corvette that he was afraid to let the clutch out. So I might go put some gas in that thing and, and run through the wash and stuff like that. And then he'd tell me to go over to this car wash or whatever or whatever. And, and he had a sister that I had favor with. Not a girlfriend, but she liked me a lot. And so I climbed up the ladder pretty fast in the had a car wash. Business and and then I went and took the fire department test and I aced it and they couldn't hire hire, hire me fast enough and uh, Dan says Mike what are you going to what am I going to work for the fire department for so he says they'll never pay you as much as I'm going to pay you I said yeah I know that Dan but you know I'm really tired of being stabbed in the back by all these older people that I'm telling them what to do you know, I'm just a kid and I'm telling these 40, 50 year old people what to do and they don't like it. And so I went to work for the fire department and uh, mm-hmm. that was a pretty cool job. You know, I, I aced that. I mean, it was a, it was a God thing. Um, I went through the training there and I had done better. They call it engineering, meaning all the pumps and the gears and all that stuff. I had done better than anybody had ever done. And uh, to the tune that when I got out of training, they put me in a fire station over on 60th and Culley. It used to be a fire station, now it's Toy and Joy. And, uh, and uh, the chief comes in with me, he takes me to the fire station. He says, uh, this is your driver. You think that wasn't a little bit? These guys did not like, like it. And, uh, you know, a new guy out of training, and this is your driver. And uh, I just had to, I said, you know, guys, can't we just do our job? And just just get through the day, you know? And it all ironed out eventually, but, but uh, yeah, and then I, then, uh, you know, it was one day on, two days off, 24 on, 48 off. And, uh, uh, I uh, bought a tavern and I it was on 82nd Division in Steinhouse Tavern, which was pretty popular back in those days. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, and that's where I met, met my wife. She was really, really angry because she had uh, caught her boyfriend uh, in bed with some gal. And, and you know, things progressed and we ended up getting married. And, yeah. Uh, she actually brought me to the Lord. She was a cradle Catholic. And, uh, and uh, you know, we had to do the premarital thing with the Catholics. Mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot. I left out a whole part. I had a girlfriend uh, when I was 
starting in the fire department. Mm -hmm. And we lived together for, I don't know, two, three, four years. And my first son was through her. And, uh, mm -hmm. and we never got married, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, told my mom that we were married. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, you know, that, that split up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was actually a single again. And, mm -hmm. And Christian was living with his mom, and uh, and yeah, it was just crazy. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, anyhow, I met Kathy, and through mm -hmm. Kathy, I started doing. You know, I took her skiing, and that, that was the. You know, I took her skiing, and she, she that was the one thing that she couldn't turn down. And so, because uh, I was a. I was pretty much a ski fanatic. You know, I, I was, I was a ski bum. You know, I, mean, I would ski all the time, and uh, and uh, yeah. So anyhow, uh, just too many things to think of. So anyhow, I was married to her for thirty-eight years. Had another child. My one son is right now, he's 48, Christian is 48, and Scott is 38, they're 10 years apart. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, and it's been a lot of turmoil as of late, you know, with the divorce and all that stuff. And, uh, I mean, it just about did me in. I mean, not that I was, I wasn't suicidal, but I was really just, Depressed, you know. And, uh, it took me about two years to get over it. So yeah. So I don't mm -hmm. wish it on anybody. It's not a good avenue to go down by any means. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, um, I uh, we were going to the Catholic Church at that time, uh, Saint Teresa, which is over on one thirtieth and. Uh, Halsey, mm -hmm. and Louis was the pastor, mm -hmm. and I got to be his right hand man during communion and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Baptisms and you name it. And uh, I used to ask Louis, you know, I spent a lot of time with him, away from the regular service. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we had a lot of really good discussions, and, mm -hmm. and I would ask him, I got started reading Revelations, mm -hmm. and I started asking him questions. Mm -hmm. and, he says, you know, you really ought to, you really ought to leave that information for us to decipher for you. And I said, well, Louis, it's in English. I can read it, you know? And uh, he says, well, you're going to end up like one of these Pentecostals or something. And I go, well, I don't know, whatever. And, uh, and I did, we, we progressed and went to um, East Hill. And uh, some of the people I know today are from that mm -hmm. scenario. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and then um, we progressed from East Hill. Uh, we go out to uh, our, uh, Destiny, out to Destiny out in Happy Valley. And we were happy there for a while. And, uh, and then I progressed to, uh, you know, Kathy was involved with worship and, and prophecy and all this stuff. And, uh, and uh, she wanted to go to Africa. I, go, I don't think that's such a good idea. And uh, her and her girlfriend, Terry, they were, I said, well, you're going to go whether I agree with you or not. You know? And she did. And uh, that's where everything went south. She went there for 30 days. And, when she came back, um, I mean, she gets off a long plane ride, 18 hours, whatever it is, and she's mad at me. I go, what the heck is this all about? And then she starts telling me how I'm into porn. I go, really? I said, well, you know, I can't deny it. I've, I've seen porn. I said, I, I bet you if everybody's honest. Most everybody's seen porn at one time or it's a commercial on TV or whatever. Anyhow, that wasn't the right answer. I should probably not admit it to 
said, well, yeah, I've seen porn. No, that wasn't what she was accusing me of. And so, so anyhow, we progressed, and, uh, and uh, she started doing some things like uh, taking money out of our savings without talking to me about it. I confronted her about it, and from there, um, it just went south, and we got divorced. And, and uh, here I am today, you know, and three years later, I'm, I'm in a much better position than I was, you know, two years ago. So uh, I thank you all about that. So, so I just, uh, you know, my day goes, I, I do my devotions every morning, my prayer time. That's how I start my day. And I just go, okay, God, where do you want me to go today? And here I am. Here I am. Where are we going today? You know, and so, you know, and uh, I appreciate you guys asking me to allow me to come with you here. You know, this great. So, you know, so I'm just kind of, that's who I am. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.